Hello guys and welcome to Vlogging Project. The last year's Moto Z has just been discounted to $299 here in the UK and $499 in the US. It's still one of the best phones you can buy in the market right now. But should you actually buy it knowing that the new Moto Z is just around the corner? Let's find out. Okay guys, let's get the unboxing out of the way first. It was a flagship phone last year, so you have to expect a little bit of uh, extras inside the box and you have them. Now the bundle that I bought my uh, phone with came with the JBL sound mode and with a free style swap or whatever they call it um, kind of case. All of that started with the original OnePlus One a couple of years ago. So basically you just snap it like that, it's using magnets. It adds a little bit of you know weight to the phone overall, but it makes it flush with the camera. Um, well, I don't really see the appeal of that to be honest with you, simply because the, the best thing about this phone is its thinness. You can see how razor blade thin it is. Although the quality is good, but it's just not my personal thing. One thing, you should be very careful with this kind of thingy over here because it might scratch your phone very easily. Now, what else Moto included in the box is this kind of thin slim bumper case um it's not for me again but i saw quite a few people with already dented frames on the phone or with broken screens so it has an edge over here and it's going to protect your phone if you drop it on the concrete like that so again it's not for me but if you're the guy who drops his phone on a regular basis that's gonna probably save your phone so what else do you have the usual book and sheet the Turbocharger, which charges the phone very quick, 1 hour 15 minutes, but I found out in my comprehensive video test, which you can find a link in the description down below, that any other charger basically can charge the phone with this speed, because the chip itself supports very quick charging. Now the problem with that is that the cable is not detachable, so if you want to download your stuff on the computer, you have to buy an adapter yourself. What else have you got in the box? You've got this nice SIM ejection tool over here. You've got a 3.5 millimeter jack and you've got this kind of strap to keep your 3.5 millimeter jack connected to your headphone so you don't lose it easily. And pretty much that's inside the box, guys. One thing I could have wished they've included in the box though is this USB Type-C to micro USB adapter so I can use all my car chargers with it. It costs only one dollar and it's a shame they didn't include it in the box but uh, anyway. Let's get to the design and build quality of the phone. These are the two colors available. Now I'm not gonna lie initially when I saw the white one I thought to myself man this is ugly that was last year. And I still think it is ugly because you've got plenty of sensors, of microphones, of all bits and pieces. It just looks ugly. The black one on the other hand, you can't see most of this stuff. And although the phones are quite big, I mean, let, let me quickly show you. There's the Axon 7 over here. Let me put them side by side like that. You can see that the Moto is noticeably taller, although they share the same screen size. It's exactly as wide as the Axon 7, but being so thin it definitely helps the grip and it feels really nice in the hand although visually the white one looks a lot bigger than the black one i'm not really sure if you can tell on the camera but in reality this one looks much nicer although i'm really a fan of the golden back over here i really thought you know to do a swap and put <laughs> put the black screen on this one but it's gonna cost me um Quite a lot of money, plus I've got a warranty on this one, so I really don't want to break this warranty. But yeah, anyway, design, absolutely amazing, very thin, very nice. On the front, as I said, a bunch of sensors over here, flash, you've got one more sensor. And the problem is, the problem is that, I mean, I like the ambient display over here, the motor display. But the thing is that you have a notification LED here which is hidden and is disabled and nobody actually find a way to enable it by default and I'm gonna show you a proof of that in just a second guys. So when your phone is completely dead and when you plug it in, this small notification LED which is hidden in this part over here just lights up for a second and when your phone starts 
it lies down. I mean, I really like the Moto display, but again, they, they could have given you the option to use the LED if you like as well, but they didn't, which is unfortunate, but anyway. Now, on the back, 13 megapixel camera, dual tone flash, you've got your magnets for your sound boost mod or all the rest of the mods. You've got the button placement here. I really don't like the button placement to be honest with you because yes, this, this button, the power button is ridged, but it's pretty hard to press. And also these, these buttons here are very, very slim. I can understand why they're so thin because that improves the overall rigidity of the phone. You're not gonna bend the phone like that and, 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 and you know, uh, crush from here from the buttons. But it's just, I mean, they're made so you can use the Moto Display and the fingerprint reader um, instead, which is quite quick in most cases. It, it, it recognizes your thumb quite quickly. It's one of the best ones on the market right now. And the good thing is that even though I have my fingerprint set up only for, for this finger, as you can see, this finger doesn't want to lock it. When I lock it over here, you can lock it actually with this finger. So it's quite handy. And again, it's made to use the Moto Display and to use the fingerprint and not these buttons over here. But anyway, it is what it is. On this side, you've got nothing. On this side, you've got your USB Type-C adapter. On this side, you've got a mic here. You've got a SIM tray. It also has a memory card slot inside here as well. As you can see, the camera protrudes a little bit, but I mean, overall, I really don't mind because the phone is so slim and it feels so good in the hand that I really don't care about the camera. One other thing, as you can maybe notice, this, this phone is a fingerprint magnet, but at least they used a very thin sheet of metal, so it's gonna be very hard for you to, to break this metal. This though, these strips over here are a very thin uh, piece of glass, so you should definitely be careful with those two. So without wasting any more time, this one is the US version, this one is the UK version. There are very, very, very small and noticeable differences in terms of the firmware, which are not really worth mentioning. But the other difference that I've noticed is that this screen over here is a little bit warmer and this screen is a little bit colder. The problem is that you can't really tweak the colors or the saturation inside the menu. So, I mean, I'm really not sure, but Anyway, the screens are really good. Compared to the Axon 7, I did a comprehensive test uh, for myself personally. They share basically the very same screen, which is, you know, top of the line screen. I really like the screen. It's one of the best, but we're gonna go to the screen. Actually, why not we go to the screen right now? So the screen, let me see what can I show you about the screen, guys. I don't have many wallpapers here, but as you can see, the colors are very nicely saturated. Uh, the contrast is, is amazing, the blacks are real blacks, so although you don't have the thing to, you know, adjust the temperature and everything else, it's perfectly calibrated as it is. Let's get to the software straight away, it's pretty much pure Android, it runs the newest version of NuGet. Now, that's the first phone in my life that when I got it, I got something like seven software updates. I mean, you can really rely on this phone to get a software update, even though it's a security update every single month guys one problem that i find on the european version that it's not present in the us version is the battery percentage over here as you can see i can't really do nothing if you go to battery let me show you you go to battery over here you should have the option to put the percentage on but you don't so what thing you can do is hold this wheel over here for a couple of seconds congrats system ui tuner has been added to the settings so basically you go to the system UI tuner under suit. So you go to status bar, battery, always show percentage. And there you go, battery percentage is back. One more thing I want to show you about the buttons. That was one of the trade-offs when I, when I bought this phone. I mean, the layout of the buttons, it's, it's a little bit too far away on the left-hand side, the back button here. I really like my back button over here. So what I did, custom navigation bars, I have a separate video showing how to do that. And as you can see, I have the <laughs> Galaxy S8 buttons, which I really like, and they're reversed over here. So my back button is here. You can do that very easily, apparently, thanks to me, who find out that it works on the Moto. Um, no worries. <laughs> 
So yeah, I mean, stock Android, absolutely no problems. You've got Snapdragon 820 on board. The performance is pretty much flawless, as you can see. It's very quick, it's very nice. It opens every single application uh, very quickly. Uh, I mean, check this out. YouTube, everything else is absolutely flawless, guys. Calendar, really nice. The RAM management is pretty good as well. Check this out. Everything is loaded over here. One major thing, though. <laughs> and that's about the clear all button as you can see it's over here at the at the corner and it's revealed only when you go through all of your apps and then clear all why is that is is beyond me i mean overall stock android you can put nova launcher no problems about that as you can see the settings menu is a little bit boring overall i really miss some themes that i have on the way cheaper xiaomi redmi note 4x but Anyway, the stock Android is as quick as it could be, so I can't really complain about the software. One other thing, the battery life. As I said last year when I saw this phone released, I see it's going to be dead in 2600 mAh of battery, and I thought to myself, the battery life is going to be ridiculous on this one. That's why they sell you separate mods for the battery, and I was basically bashing the phone over the social media, and boy, I was wrong. I mean, check this out, guys. I'm really a heavy user, guys. And let me show you what kind of battery life should you expect on this phone. And I can happily say that you shouldn't worry about that because check this out. Screenshots, I've got quite a lot of them. Ignore some. It's usually, I mean, it's usually day or day and a half. It's never two days. But check this out. 4 hours, 27 minutes. 3 hours, 36 minutes. 4 hours, 39 minutes. 4 hours. 5 hours 15 minutes, 4 hours 8 minutes, 5 hours 1 minute, 3 hours 43 minutes, 4 hours 38 minutes, 4 hours 31 minutes, 4 hours, 4 hours 36 minutes, 4 hours 49 minutes, 4 hours 12 minutes, 3 hours 25 minutes, 3 hours 52 minutes, 5 hours 11 minutes so you, as you can see guys that's one of the things that differentiates me from all the other channels i really use my phones be before releasing the review i'm not gonna tell you oh the battery is gonna last you through the day of course it's gonna last you through the day but how much battery and screen on time you're gonna get out of this small battery here is the answer guys between three and five hours basically if you really kick the phone really hard you might get only three hours but if you, if you don't hit it that hard, although my usage again is very heavy, you might get even 5 hours, which is a miracle, compared, I mean, considering how small this battery is. So one more test that I did about the battery and the audio, guys, is uh, I've played 1 hour full HD video on maximum volume through the phone speaker, which drained 13% of the battery, leaving me with 87%, as you probably can't see over here. Anyway, I played the very same video file for one hour with the JBL sound mode, and that one drained 11% of the battery. So we've got 2% difference with the mod actually drains less battery, but the battery of the mod was on 79% after that. So as you can see, the mod itself saves you just a little bit of the battery, but considering, you know, the boost that it gives you to the sound, definitely thumbs up from me. Now, one more thing. If you're planning to buy the Droid version of the phone, the American version, you've got no Band 20. And especially here in the UK, that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, you're not going to get 4G all the time and your phone is going to drain a little bit more battery trying to constantly improve the signal. So that's one thing you should consider when buying this phone guys uh, otherwise they're basically the same so gaming performance i'm not really going to show it off because snapdragon 820 absolutely very top high levels of of gaming i mean a little bit of heat a little bit of heat over here in this area but that's inevitable considering that the phone is 14 40p screen guys uh, so let me just quickly show you about the benchmarks i mean i don't really do benchmarks but just, 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 just to show you what the results are. As you can see, everything is top of the line. You're not going to struggle anywhere. Now, the gaming performance in the handles every single game like a champ.
So yeah, gaming performance very solid overall guys, very fast loading times as well, especially with heavy games like Mortal Kombat. So let's talk about the camera a little bit. A lot of people bash the camera, they said, oh, it's only 13 megapixels, it's not a good camera. Well, let me tell you something. It might not be your Samsung Galaxy S8 camera guys, but it's really good. The front facing camera, as you can see inside, uh, yeah, that's me. Another selfie of myself over here, as you can see, quite good. A little bit of a kind of a macro shot here. Very good details, as you can see over here. Pretty good quality as well. That's low light, plenty of detail, no noise. That's again low light in auto mode, guys. That's manual mode over here. That's more like, like you see it through your eyes. But th the thing is that you ha actually have the options, you know, to tweak that. So that's very good as well. Check this out, the HDR, that's without HDR, that's with HDR, you can play around with it if you like. Nighttime photos, excellent processing over here, it cleared all the noise and everything looks nice and sharp. Very realistic as well. You can see this photo as well, very low, very very low amount of, you know, blur over here and artifacts. Check the bokeh effect. No pixelization over here, nothing, it's just, it just amazing, guys. Check this out as well, beautiful. Oh, by the way, as you can see, I'm filming on 16 by 9, which means only 10 megapixels. I'm not really using the full potential on 13 megapixels, but it's just, it just crops a little bit from, uh, from the top and the bottom. So you can see 16 by 9, 10 megapixels, beautiful photos. Check this out as well. That's what this phone does to the iPhones, by the way. Check this out. Another selfie. Really good amount of details. I'm very happy with the selfie camera. Low light. Man, check the low light. Check, check this out over here. Okay, let me see where the fountain is, is going. Check this out. That's really good, my book. Check this out. That's a really challenging situation over here. Check this out. That's absolutely amazing, guys. Check it out. Fabulous. Check this out. So I can't really say anything wrong about the camera, guys. The video, let me show you the video. Let me show you the video. Where is the video? So welcome to Walking Project. It's time to put the Moto Z to my video test. To see what we're gonna see. <laughs> Uh, as you can see, it's a beautiful day here in London. That could happen only on Sundays, so I couldn't miss the opportunity. Um, so yeah, as always, it looks quite good on the screen, but it's another thing when, when we upload it. And I'm gonna do a separate 4K video test as well, just to see if there's any difference in the quality. But so far, so far it looks okay, of course I'm more interested to see how the stabilization works because I think it has only uh, digital stabilization, so let's see how the transition to the sky works, let's shake it up a little bit like that, and uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Okay guys, so it's time for a quick 4K video test, I'm not quite sure if the stabilization is going to work as good on the 4K. But I guess there's only one way to see it. I'm gonna shake it up a little bit like that, like that. Let's see the transitions. And again, just enjoying the beautiful day. I feel like I have to stress on that because we don't really get days like that in England. So we try to enjoy it as little as we have. So yeah, let me upload those two videos and, uh, and see which one, which one looks better, actually. Yep, see you later, guys. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still filming with my Note 5, not with this Moto Z because the low light video is better on the Samsung devices, but on daytime, the quality is on par, the stabilization is really, really good, guys. One more thing about the camera, guys, is I really like this shortcut. You do like that two times and you switch on the camera. It works in every single situation and I really use this all the time, basically. You can always chop two times like that to activate the flashlight. So, <laughs> thumbs up for Moto for these mods. Let's check the sound. The sound is coming from this speaker over here and it gets quite a lot of dirt. 
I got to the point where uh, it was distorting because there was something stuck inside. So your toothbrush is your best friend. Just clean it up on a regular basis like that to avoid any dirt sticking up inside. And let's just do a quick test and I'll tell you what my opinion on that is. By the way, you've got the front facing flush over here. Thumbs up for more for including that. Check this out. So, the speaker is loud enough, the quality is about average, but the good thing is that it's facing towards you, which is very hard to block, even if you block it like that, it doesn't block 100%, you still hear what's going on, but now, when you plug the JBL here, check this out. That's very loud guys, that's absolutely loud and I'm very happy that you can just snap this mode on and it gives you such a boost which is basically quite a lot better than the front facing stereo speakers on the Axon 7 and basically on any other phone. Of course it's quite bulky but you can at least carry it in your back or something like that. I could have wished they've included some sort of a, you know, uh, sock or something like that or some kind of a case but well they didn't and another thing is that you can see some debris over here again your toothbrush clean your debris on a regular basis you don't you don't you really don't want much of that much of them stuck inside and as you can see I didn't care uh, so they're already stuck but anyway one thing about the mod one thing about the mod though Again, you should be quite careful with these ones because you can scratch this part over here. The mod automatically switches the phone equalizer to bass. Which is not the best thing if you're listening to a podcast or somebody just, just voice without music. Uh, I could have wished that there was an option to tweak the equalizer for the mod, but, but no matter what kind of equalizer you're running currently on the phone, snapping up the mod puts him directly to bass mode. But, well, the other thing I could have wished to see is the phone being able to charge itself through the battery of the mod. That would have been awesome, but apparently you can't really do that. One thing you can do though, because the charging port of the mod is here and you can check the battery percentage of the mod by holding up this button over here. Although it's gonna say green or something like that. Yeah, green, which means kind of... I believe above 60% or something like that. So basically when you snap it like that, if you charge the phone, after it stops charging the phone, it's gonna charge the mod itself, which is which is pretty handy. Thumbs up for that. The, whoa. <laughs> yeah, so the mod is quite nice. I can't really justify buying any of the other mods, guys, because they're just not for me. Maybe the battery mod, but it is quite expensive for what it is. You can easily buy a separate, you know, power brick and just uh, a power bank and just charge your phone with that. That's not a problem, but I'm really glad you have the option. That's the most important thing. You have the option. If you need it, put it in your bag, slap it like that, and you've got the sound which no other phone can actually match. When it comes down to the headphone, oh man, that wasn't nice. The live, live Xiaomi Note 4X uh, <laughs> drop test, the phone just survived uh, my, my uh, wooden flooring, no damage at all, so thumbs up, you might want to check my video out for the best budget phone, the Xiaomi Note 4X. Anyway, the headphone output, is really good a little bit above average I would say a little bit above, above average it's not like on the Axon 7 level or some other phones but it's really good guys I mean it's it, it's good enough so yeah pretty much that's it for the Moto Z guys let's see what I'm gonna say in the conclusion in just a sec so where does it leave us with the Moto Z guys? In 2017 I can really recommend buying this phone right now, it's discounted directly from Motorola, you've got the warranty and everything else, even I saw some prices on Amazon 
uh, from the German Amazon for like 260, 270, which is a crazy price for this phone, guys, because you really have a proper flagship, very sexy design. I've got a couple of people asking me, oh, what's that phone? Because it's not very common, but it's really nice. I mean, it, it has the wall factor. And with the addition with the motor mods, you've got the flexibility to, you know, tailor this phone to your specific needs and no other phone offers that at the moment right now and the other reason is that the new Moto Z2 Play has already been announced for 450 bucks which means that the new Moto Z2 is going to be at least 600 dollars guys which is going to be about 600 pounds here in the UK where you can get the last year's model for 300 and that's definitely a go from me that's my daily driver for the last two months guys and I really love the phone so hit the thumbs up button if you like my video guys uh, subscribe why not if you come this far it's been a, a good 20 minute video uh, on this phone but at least it's comprehensive and I hope that I really gave you the hundred percent you know true information about it because I bought it with my own money it's not sponsored it anyway so yeah thank you very much again for watching guys and see you in the next one Adiós. What do you mean you're not sure, Jack? What do you mean you're not sure, you donkey?